Friends, we are gathered here today in the sight of God to witness and bless the joining together of Jennifer and Alexander in Christian marriage. The covenant of marriage was established by God who created us, male and female, for each other. With his presence and power, Jesus graced a wedding at Cana of Galilee and in his sacrificial love gave us the example for the love of husband and wife. Jennifer and Alexander come now to give themselves to one another in this holy covenant. You may be seated. Jennifer and Alex, I ask you now in the presence of God and these friends and family and loved ones to declare your intention to enter into union with each other through the grace of Jesus Christ who called you into union with himself as was acknowledged at your baptism. Jennifer, will you have Alexander to be your husband, to live together in holy marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? Will you? Alexander, will you have Jennifer to be your wife, to live together in holy marriage? Will you love her, comfort her? honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live. Will you? I will. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I and her grandparents, Dutch and Charlotte Patton. To you who are families and friends, the marriage of Jennifer and Alexander unite their families and create a new one. They ask for your blessing. Do you who are here representing their families and friends rejoice in their union and pray God's blessing upon them? If so, respond by saying, we do. We do. We do. Will all of you, by God's grace, do everything in your power to uphold and care for these two persons in their marriage? If so, respond by saying, we will. We will. In the Bible, New Testament, Paul wrote a letter to the Corinthians, and in it he describes what we know to be a vivid and perfect illustration of love. Listen to these words from 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. 
if I give all I possess to the poor and give my body over to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, that which is in part will disappear. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became grown, I put the ways of childhood behind me. We only see a reflection as in a mirror. Then we will see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have fully known. These three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Jenna and Alex, are they finally here? All of the planning, all of the decisions, all the preparations, all that's done now. And congratulations to you both. You've weathered some interesting conversations over the weeks and months, and you've made some difficult decisions together, and you've grown with each other. And anyone who's here who's been involved with a wedding and a marriage know that there's more than this ceremony that's involved. There have been decisions to be made, questions to be answered. There have been your preferences. There have been preferences of everybody else. And you've had to work through all of those things, and that's not going to change after today. There will be still people who offer advice, whether it's asked for or not. There will still be questions to settle and difficult decisions to make. But what changes with today is that the two of you will become one flesh. You two will be married in the sight of God and of all these people, and it will be your love for each other and your decisions and your preferences that will take first place over everything. You need to know that people who are married and joined together by God are not exempt from pain and suffering. You'll probably get sick from time to time. You may suffer from financial difficulties. There will be days that don't seem to go right at all. You still will cry. You might even have conversations together along the way. But when your faith is in Christ, and when your marriage is based on God and each other, then the strength of your marriage won't be contingent on feelings, and it won't be able to, it won't shake with the sands of time. When your marriage is based on God, it will be unshakable because your love is for each other and for God. At this time, your marriage is a reminder, and the scriptures are a reminder that God loves you, and God is faithful to his promise to love you. And the Bible compares his love for us as that of a marriage. Marriage is a covenant. It's a decision between ourselves and God to be faithful to God. And with you, your decision before God is to be faithful to each other. And that means you put each other first. That means you put the welfare of your marriage before your obligations to others. And that means as well-meaning and as well-loved as all these people are, that means they take second place. That means your jobs take a second place. Down the road when you have kids, they'll take second place because your marriage is about the two of you being strongly united before God. And everything you do from here on out will not be for yourself. It'll be for your marriage. And so I encourage you to let all that you do be under the protection and the guidance of God. And remember to pray for each other. Remember to pray with each other. And pray for God's blessing of peace on your home because it will be God who will keep your commitment strong and keep you true to each other. Alex and Jen, the love of God is as real tomorrow and the next day as your love for each other is today. And your love is built on trust. Trust upon trust. Trust in God. Continue to trust in each other. And always center your marriage and your love for each other on the love of God. Faith, hope, and love. 
these three. But the greatest of these is last. Let's pray. Eternal God, you are the creator and the preserver of all life. You are the author of salvation and the giver of grace. Lord, bless and make holy with your spirit, Jennifer and Alexander, who come now to join in marriage. Grant that they may give their vows to each other in the strength of your love. Enable them to grow in love and peace with you and with each other all through days, so that they may reach out in concern and service to the world through Jesus our Lord. Amen. In the name of God. In the name of God. I, Alexander. I, Alexander. Take you, Jennifer. Take you, Jennifer. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted from death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. In the name of God. In the name of God. I, Jennifer. I, Jennifer. Take you, Alexander. Take you, Alexander. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. May I have the rings, please? These rings are the outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace signifying to us the union between Christ and his church and signifying to everyone the uniting of Jennifer and Alexander in holy marriage. Lord, please bless the giving of these rings that Jenna and Alex, who wear them, may live in your peace and continue in your favor all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Repeat after me. Jennifer, I give you this ring. Jennifer, I give you this ring. As a sign of my vow. As a sign of my vow. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And the Son. And the Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alexander, Alexander, I give you this ring. I give you this ring as a sign of my vow. As a sign of my vow. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And the Son. And the Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. At this time, Alex and Jenna will assemble what is called the Unity Cross. It's a beautiful sculpture that they will display in their home to remind them of the covenant that they're making today. In Genesis chapter 1, we read that God created man in his own image, and that means God created the man strong and bold to be a leader, to be a protector of his wife and family. This outer form of the Unity Cross represents the strength, the leadership, the protection of the man. The book of Ephesians reminds husbands to love their wives as Christ loved the church, totally and completely giving themselves for her. In Genesis chapter 2, we learn that woman was taken from man 
And this bride's piece of the Unity Cross represents the beauty and the capabilities of the woman of Jenna, designed with intricate, beautiful detail and placed inside the protection of the groom's cross, completing the sculpture and representing that two become one. To complete the sculpture representing the couple's covenant, we now place three pegs to hold it together. The pegs represent the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, showing God's place in this covenant and the security and completeness, completeness that only our Heavenly Father can give. The scripture tells us that a three-stranded cord is not easily broken. Matthew 19 says, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Alex and Jenna have written letters to each other. They will place these letters in the drawer of this cross to be read privately at another time. Alex and Jennifer, you have declared your consent and your vows before God and this congregation. May God confirm your covenant and fill you both with grace. And to you, family and friends, now that Alex and Jenna have given themselves to each other by solemn vows, with the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings, I announce to you that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Let us pray. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage, of Christian marriage, that in it is represented the covenant between Christ and his church. Send your blessing upon Jennifer and Alex that they may surely keep their marriage covenant and grow in love and godliness together, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God the Eternal keep you in love with each other so that the peace of Christ abides in your home. Go to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. And now, Jenna and Alex, will you turn and face your family and friends. By the authority vested in me in the United Methodist Church and in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, it is my pleasure and privilege to introduce to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Alexander Krauss. Alex, you may Thank you. It looks good. 